thousand some years before. Uh, each of them is accepted as the incarnation of Godhead, king or emperor of the world. He instructed his sons. He had one hundred sons. And he was, uh, before retiring from his family life, he wanted to install his eldest son, Maharaj Bharat, on the throne. And before retiring, he was instructing his other sons as well. Maharaj Bharat was a great king, and after his name, India is called Bharatvarsha. This planet is was known before that as Ilavati Varsha, and after Maharaj Bharat. Uh, rule, this planet was known as Bharatvarsh. Gradually the planet was divided into so many other states. Now Bharatvarsh means a small piece of land known as India. Anyway, the king of this planet Rishabdev was instructing his son as follows. Nayam diho diho bhajam niloki kastan kaman arhati bir bhujangaji tapo dibbam putraka yena sattam suddhi jasmat Brahma Sokam Anantyam. <laughs> he is in his tag team. My dear son, this human form of body is not to be wasted like cats and dogs. What is that? How this body is wasted like cats and dogs. The kastana kaman. Kaman means sense gratification. So with hard labor, ultimate end of hard laboring is sense gratification. Now, Ah, uh, not only in your country, but also in all other countries at the present moment, everyone is trying to make economic development. What is that economic development? You have got a very good idea, industrialization, uh, high standard of living, and so many other things. But the end is sense gratification. The purpose of economic development, it is wonderful for us, we are Indian, when we see, when I was in Los Angeles, there is a free way. So eight lines of cars running in seventy miles speed this way, and eight miles of lines running cars in the other from the opposite side. And unfortunately, one day we had one car which was running at thirty-five miles only, and our Gorsandar was driving. 
immediately he was arrested by the police. Not exactly arrested, stopped. Uh, that means you cannot run your car in this way at the five mile speed. So now from impartial point of view, if we study why people are running in this way and that way, what is the ultimate goal? If we calculate very in cool head, the ultimate goal is sense good. So however busy we may be, however intelligent we may be, however advanced we may be in material civilization, the real point is sense good. I have seen in the Times Square in New York, there are so many advertisements for sense gratification. Advertising. Here we'll have nice girls come on like that, freely written, and some naked picture, and so many theaters. The whole idea is Sanskrit, that's all. Rishabh, it is not new. <coughs> this is very old fashion. The sense gratificatory process is current in all other planets, even uh, which we call the demigods planet, heavenly planet, the moon planet, the sun planet, everywhere from the highest planet, Brahma low, down to the, uh, what is called, the Patala low. There are different Sanskrit names of different planets. Everywhere in this material world is the ultimate point is sense gratification. That's all. <laughs> so, uh, Rishabh is pointing out that this sense gratification problem or desire or propensity is there even in the hogs and dogs. Therefore he says distinguishing the human form of life from the life of lowest class of animals that he says, ayana deha, this body, na ayana deha, deho bhajan niloke. Niloke means in the human society. Everyone has got body. The dog has body, the cat has body, the tiger has body, the bird has body, everyone has got body. Similarly, we have also got body. Therefore, he is warning. My dear son, in this body the aim of life should not be sense gratification after so much trouble. If the point is sense gratification, then why so much, of, I mean to say, manifestation of economic development? Do you think that those who are not fortunate to have these uh, flyways or motor cars or a skyscraper building and take, for example, the most aborigines, the most uncivilized nation somewhere in Africa or any other parts of the world, are they not sense gratifying? Uh, the dogs and hogs, they are not sense gratifying. So if the ultimate aim of life is simply sense gratification, uh, then why should we take so much trouble? There is a very nice story. These are very instructive stories. Uh, 
from Bhagavad. There was a very nice prostitute. His, her key was, if anyone wants to visit that prostitute, she was charging uh, uh, one, one hundred thousands of, uh, yeah, what is called, diamond pieces. Diamonds, you can understand, one diamond piece is at least five hundred dollars. So she used to charge, if somebody wants to visit uh, my house, then he must pay uh, one hundred thousand pieces of diamond. So there are rich men for sense gratification. They are she was being paid. But uh, one poor man and diseased man. So he, he had his very faithful wife. Uh, although he was very poor and diseased, uh, his wife was serving him very nicely. He, the husband could not work because he was diseased. And the wife uh, was working and uh, I mean, maintaining her husband herself. Fortunately, she had no children. But the husband was always morose. Now the wife is asking, My dear husband, I am trying to satisfy you in so many ways working myself and cooking for you, giving you food stuff, and I'm getting you uh, bath and everything. Uh, why you are so morose? So he was hesitating to disclose his mind. When she insisted that you disclose why you are sorry, then I shall try to satisfy you So he disclosed his mind. What is that? I want to visit that prostitute. Just see. He is poor man. And he is diseased. Just see how much this lust and sense gratification is strong. Uh, he was thinking of going to that prostitute and he disclosed his mind to his wife. Wife was very faithful. She wanted to satisfy her husband. So she promised, my dear husband, I shall try my best to take you to that prostitute. Oh, where you get one hundred thousand pieces of diamond? All right. I shall uh, see to it. Then uh, she went to the prostitute's house and without uh, her permission she was washing uh, her dishes, her clothes and uh, <coughs> I want to say sweeping the rooms and everything. The prostitute asked, who are you? You are coming, you are not charging anything, you are not asking anything. Uh, what do you want? I shall tell you. So in, in this way, when she was daily asking, hey, what is your mind, you tell me, uh, you are very nice uh, woman, you are for nothing, you are working for me, I must something do for you. Then she disclosed her mind. Uh, uh, my dear uh, lady, I, I am very poor man, but my husband, he, he is diseased and he has no money, but he wants to visit. So the woman could understand and she said, yes, you can bring your husband on the uncertain subject. So, she was very glad and told her husband that I have fixed up an 
wanted the dead, he, he shall be able to go. Ah, he was very glad. Now, when the man visited the prostitute's house, uh, she received the man. In India it is system that when you receive a gentleman or lady, you must give him sumptuously to eat. So there was many palatable dishes served to the man, and each uh, vegetable and each preparation was put in two pots, one in iron pots and one in golden pots. So he was eating. Now this man asked the prostitute, well, you have given me the same preparation in two pots, one in gold pots and one in iron pots. Why? What is the idea? So she said, the first of all taste it, then I shall disclose what is the idea. So you are tasting, eating, then the prostitute asked him, how do you like? Oh, it is very nice. Ah. Then, uh, is there any different taste in the golden pot? No, the same taste. And the iron pot? Oh, the same taste. Oh. So, she replied at that time that you are so rascal that you want to gratify your senses, but you do not know the sense gratification in poor wife or rich wife is the same. There is no difference of test. So why you are after a, a woman uh, by paying these uh, 100,000 of jewels? The idea is, it is, this story is very instructive and it is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavad. The idea is the same thing is communication is the ultimate aim of life. Then why so much hard trouble for decorating the process of sense gratification? Why wasting so much time for decorating? So this of the is asking that sense gratification there is necessary, because we have got senses, but not with too much trouble, accepting too much trouble in the name of economic development. Because our time is very valuable. Oh. If we want to utilize our short duration of life, which we have got at our disposal, we must utilize it for self-realization. Uh, not for unnecessary increasing the necessities of bodily wants. This is not uh, a good type of civilization, simply wasting time for sense gratification. Time should be utilized for better advantage. Great uh, Janaka Pandi says that you know, in your country I've seen many tablets, time is money. Yes, actually time is very valuable. But we do not know how to utilize this time. That is a mistake of this present civilization. Time should not be I am to say wasted simply for sense gratification. So far the problem of sense gratification is, uh, is there. It should be minimized. Ah, it should not be increased. Minimized. Ah, just like according to the Vedic system, uh, there are brahmachari, uh, grihastha, vānaprastha, and sannyas, four divisions of the society, 
So the brahmachari, bhāna-prastha, brahmachari means student life, bhāna-prastha means retired life, and sannyas means rounds life. For them, the minimum necessities of life is prescribed. And they should be automatically minimum because they are uh, ordered to beg from door to door and leave. The brahmachari is meant for begging. Now, no beggar can live very luxuriantly. That is not possible. It is not possible. So if a beggar goes to somebody's house, mother, give me some alms. So it is not that he is, uh, one is uh, uh, awarding some hundred thousands of rupees or dollars. So naturally they have minimized their only little luxury or uh, I mean to say, high standard of life is allowed to the Griyasthas, according to Vedic system. And the three other sections of the society, they should minimize. Why minimize? Because the idea is not to waste time unnecessarily. Unnecessary. After all, either you live very high standard of life or low standard of life. There is no question of low standard of life. The uh, proper upkeep of health is cleanliness. If you keep yourself clean, then your, uh, I mean, the problem of health is solved. Simply cleanliness. Uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. That is also uh, English proper. Uh, and in Sanskrit literature also, bhajha bhantaram suchi, one should be clean within and without. So without, uh, you can clean your, yourself simply by water. By the laws of nature you have got enough water. So you can cleanse yourself outside by water. There is no necessity of soap. There is no set necessity of anything. Simply if you wash your body with water sufficiently, of course, in your country, it is cold country. Uh, in India, uh, the common people, they go to the river and take bath very nicely uh, because it is a tropical climate, there is no uh, trouble. So uh, you can cleanse your body. There are many saintly persons deciding on the bank of the river, Ganges, all in the morning they clean the body, uh, they go, go to evacuate on the field. After evacuating they come to the river, clean the body very nicely and smear the body with the clay received from the river and they sit down at a place and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, whole day. They don't care for whether they, they have got to eat or not to eat. By, by God's grace, somebody is coming, somebody is giving uh, something, somebody is giving something. Uh, just like in this, your country also, you are offering, somebody is offering food, somebody is offering something. Uh, so there is arrangement by God's law. Everyone shall eat. It is not that you have never seen any animal or any bird has died for starvation. No. There is no starvation in the law, the law of God. Everyone has food. Visayokalu Sarvatasya. By the laws of nature, by God's order, everyone has, I mean to say, provision for four things. What is that? Eating, shelter, and sense gratification, and defense. Ahara nidra This is secure. Uh, everyone, if you see a bird, bird's life, by nature, one bird has got another mate. A male and female, they are together. Anywhere you go. A tiger, a tigress. A dog, a sea dog. A hawk, a sea hawk. 
So these are not problems. Here also, uh, anyone, a boy, a girl, a man, woman, there is. So the arrangement is there. Uh, so that is not problem. So we should be satisfied. The Krishna consciousness means whatever is received through the mercy of God, we should be satisfied. That's all. Uh, therefore we prescribe that our students should be married. Because that is a problem. Sex life is a problem. So this marriage in every society, either Hindu society or uh, Christian society or Mahamanan, marriage is done under religious rituals. That means one should be satisfied, oh, God has sent me this man as my husband. And the woman and man should think that God has sent me this woman, this nice woman as my wife. Let us live peacefully. But if I want, oh, this wife is not good, that girl is nice, if this man is not good, that man is good, then all things spoil. All things spoil. Because these demands are there, sense gratification, on the basis of sense gratification. I don't like this girl, I like that girl, I don't like this boy, I like that boy. That means sense gratification. Otherwise, the sense gratification, as I have already cited the example, the prostitute gave two uh, pots of uh, vegetables that you are thinking that uh, you shall enjoy this uh, woman who is charging uh, one million dollars or like that. <coughs> the sense pleasure from this woman will be greater than the other woman. It is a mistake. The sense pleasure is the same. Either you uh, derive it from this man or that man or this woman or that man. So, if our Krishna consciousness improves, then we may be satisfied whatever is Krishna prasad, that is Krishna. Whatever Krishna has offered me, that is sufficient. Now, then your problem of sense gratification is solved. Similarly, your bread problem is solved, your uh, apartment problem is solved if you make your life very simple and shortcut then the balance time you can utilize for Krishna consciousness. This is the program. Oh, this is the program of Vedic civilization. You will find great scholars, Vyasdev, oh, there is no, I mean the comparison of his scholars say, how many now this Simad of he has written 18,000 verses. And not only Srimad Bhai, he has written eight, uh, eighteen Puranas. Out of eighteen Puranas, the Srimad Bhagavat is one Purana. And in one Purana you find eighteen thousand verses and each and every word is so meaningful that you study throughout your whole life. Oh, still you will find repressed. Why this Srimad Bhagavatam? There is Mahabharat. And out of the Mahabharat, the Bhagavad Gita is only one chapter. Seven hundred verses. Such a great scholar was living in a cottage. Not only that, he was, of course, Brahmin, he was Sanki, but he was family man. Uh, he had his wife, he had his children. Oh. Similarly, you will find the history of Janaka Pandit. He was a great politician, Prime Minister of Emperor Chandragupta. Those who have read history of India, they know it. Oh. The Chandragupta was uh, during the time of Alexander the Selkar in Greece. He also visited India to conquer. Uh, that history is there. So at that time, Chandragupta,
Kolkata was the emperor of India, and he had his prime minister, Chanakya Pandit, and he was not charging a farthing. And uh, uh, um, he was vastly learned. You see, his politics, uh, uh, he studied in the MA class in Indian University. And those who are students of politics, they might have uh, known this uh, gentleman's name, Chanakya Pandit. And in India, New Delhi, uh, there is a quarter where foreign ambassadors are supplied place. So that quarter is known as Chanakya Puri. Chanakya Puri, because he was politician, under his name, that place is uh, certain, Chanakya Puri. So the, the prime minister, the great scholar, the great scientist, they used to live in a cottage. They gave us so much contribution how to uh, make scientific advancement because the Brahmins, they are meant not for material enjoyment, simply for. So there are therefore four classes. Only the Kshatriyas and Vaishyas were meant for uh, economic development. So the whole idea here is expressed by the subject, my dear sons, ayana deha devajan niloke kastana kamana na arhati virbhushanchi. You should distinguish yourself from the hogs and dogs uh, the, uh, simply for sense gratification this life is ne- not meant for working very hard. That is the modern civilization, not only here, now, uh, every the whole material world, history is like that. People are after sense gratification. Come on. Vishra Chakravarti Thakur, a great commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam, is explaining this verse that kastan kastapradan kamaan josi darsana sparsana din na arati naiva arati iti. Kamaan, he has <coughs> plainly expressed that kama, sense gratification means to uh, see woman with lust or to touch woman with lust. That is called kama or sense gratification. So <clears throat> this is natural. Materialistic life means whenever there is some uh, beautiful woman or girl, uh, it is natural. It is not, one sense it is not bad because it is natural. <coughs> there is a very nice uh, verse written by a Rupa Goswami. He is explaining Jubati Nang Jatha Juna, Junang Jatha Jubati. Jubati means young girl and Juna means young boy. So he is expressing his desire, my dear Lord, as a young boy has got natural affection for a young girl, or a young girl has got a natural affection for a young boy. Spontaneously. It is not to be taught or to be educated in the schools and colleges. Spontaneously the attraction is there. How my attraction for you will be like that spontaneous? It's a very nice example. So uh, this attraction for uh, man or woman is called kama. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that uh, this has to be controlled. This has to be controlled. That is the distinction between human life and uh, animal life. Animal life, they are st- still controlled, but uh, human life being so-called advanced in 
civilization. They have no control. They will be surprised that lion, <coughs> these examples are given in the Shastra. It is not that the animal eaters <coughs> or uh, uh, meat eaters have got more passion than the vegetable eaters. No. The example is given there in the Shastra, a comparison between lion and the pigeons. The pigeons are vegetarian. They simply eat grains. And the lion, uh, they, they eat uh, only uh, meat and flesh. And so, but still in spite the lion's eating flesh, he has got uh, only one sex appetite uh, once in a year. But the vegetarian, the pigeon, although eating grains, or uh, at least hundred times daily, so it is not that the vegetarians are less passionate than the animal eaters or flesh eaters. Nature's goals are different. It can be controlled. But human consciousness, uh, is, this control is, uh, I want to say, practice from the brahmacharya life. Because the, unless we uh, control our sex life, there is uh, very little possibility of advancing in spiritual consciousness. Because a spiritual perfection means to stop the transmigration of the soul from one body to another. That is real spiritual perfection. Stopping, stopping the soul, the spirit soul, transmigrating. This process is going on. Hey <clears throat> Rupe Brahmanana Bhamite Kono Bhakavanaji, Lord Chaitanya said that each and every spirit soul is just wandering throughout the whole universe from one planet to another, one body to another. This business is going on. But the basic principle of this continued transmigration is sex life or sense gratification. Anyway, thank you. so long we have got a pinch of sense gratification, we have to take birth in any form or any shape within this material world. When we shall be actually disgusted, no more material sense gratification, then you are Brahma Bhuta, you are eligible to enter into the spiritual world. That is the whole process. Therefore, if we are at all interested, and that interest must be there in human life, otherwise it is spoiling. That is the problem, that no more transmigration from one body to another. That problem can be solved in this human form of life. Therefore, uh, Rishabdev advises his sons, my dear sons, uh, to, uh, to work very, very hard simply for sense gratification is not the business of human form of life. Nāyana deha, deha vādhyāṁ okay? Then what it is meant for? The next line he says that tapo, tapo means uh, austerity. austerity. What is that austerity? The austerity is to follow the rules and regulation by which one can elevate himself to the spiritual platform. That is required. In human, either you practice yoga or, or hatha yoga or jnana yoga or dhyana yoga or karma yoga or gyan, everything is yoga. As I explained last night in the meeting in the chart, the yoga is one staircase to reach to the perfection of spiritual realization. And there are many steps. Oh, that's like uh, hatha yoga, dhyana yoga, gyana yoga. There are many steps. But the perfectional stage is bhakti yoga. The perfect 
professional stage is bhakti yoga. That it should be the aim of life. But people do not know it, that what is the aim of life. The aim of life is self-realization and to understand and to know and to reestablish our lost relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. That should be the aim of life. Therefore, it requires tapo. Tapo means voluntarily accepting some penances. Just like I'm inclined for sense gratification. And tapasya means voluntarily avoid too much sense gratification. The śāstra does not stop sense gratification. If the nature law allows <coughs> sense gratification to the lower animals, birds and beasts, why not to the man? But it should be controlled. <coughs> tapasya. So this is also tapasya. Just like if one man is satisfied with one man, woman, or one woman is satisfied with one man and live peacefully, that is tapasya. Because naturally, natural inclination is that uh, I want to enjoy that man or that woman. Uh, but if you can control that you be satisfied uh, that with woman or with one woman, that is called tapasya. That is austerity. That is, voluntarily you are restraining Tapasya means voluntary restraint. <coughs> in India, still the system is followed in conservative families that a widow cannot marry. There is no widow marriage in India. This is the Manushangita, the lawgiver, the saintly persons, Manushangita. Why? Widow marriage is private. The idea is, generally, everywhere, in all countries, the female population is greater than the male population. So the idea is that she has become widow. She was once married. Now if again she is married, the another virgin girl, she does not get the chance of being married. Therefore there is no widow marriage according to Hindu scripture. And a man is allowed, if he is, I mean to say, able man, he can marry more than one wife. Not that, simply marry. To get one, more than one wife does not mean to a sense in general. The wife must be maintained very respectfully. She must have good house, good ornaments, good food, good uh, servants, good children, then one can marry. Not that, simply for sense gratification. Just like Krishna. Krishna married sixteen thousand wives. And sixteen thousand wives, sixteen thousand palaces. And each wife ten children. And Narod wanted to see the how Krishna is managing the sixteen thousand wives. He wanted to visit each and every palace, and he saw that everywhere Krishna is present. That means not that he remained one and there were sixteen thousand. Because there are sixteen thousand wives, so with each and every wife he was present. That is God. He can expand himself. Akhilātma Bhūta. He is all-pervading. Why sixteen thousand wives? If he is omnipotent, all-powerful, then sixteen millions of wives also in sufficient. So the program of sense gratification should be minimized, and that is called tapasya. The program of sense gratification should be minimized, and that is called tapasā, tapo. Tapo divyam. Then why I, I shall minimize my sense gratification? Uh, if I have got opportunity, I must utilize it to the best of my capacity that is being done. 
not only now, every time. No, you have to do it before for self-realization, for God-realization. You have to save your time. Tapo dipang putraka. And what is the purpose of that uh, self-realization and God-realization? That is the jina sattam suddhet. Then your existence will be purified. Uh, what is the necessity of purifying my existence? Jina sattam suddhet jasma. If you purify your existence, then jasma dhamma so come. He will, he will relish unlimited pleasure. You are after now temporary pleasure by sense gratification. But in this life, in this human form of life, if you control your sense gratification and utilize the time for self-realization, so as soon as you are self-realized man, or Brahma-realized man, then your happiness is unlimited. You are after happiness. <coughs> your sense gratification means you are after happiness. But this happiness is temporary. Any material happiness, it has no continuity. It has not limit. But if you want, but my desire is to have unlimited happiness, unlimited life, unlimited knowledge, if you want that, so try this life, this human form of life. Don't waste it simply after sense gratification, but practice austerity, minimize your sense gratification, be satisfied whatever is offered by nature or by God. Uh, we don't not complete abstinence, but uh, regulate it and the balance time utilized for self-realization, then your perfection will be there by which you will live eternally, you will enjoy eternally, and your knowledge will be under. Uh, so, this uh, of uh, there instructed in this way, it is very instructive uh, chapter, uh, if you continue to understand this instruction of this Abdev, now we have only read one verse. Uh, and the next verse is that Mahatsiva uh, Dharma would be Mukti. Mahatsiva. If you want this uh, uh, platform of self realization or spiritual life, then your engagement should be mahatsiva, to serve a great soul, to associate with great soul. Then that will be possible. We shall discuss this next show. Mahatsiva, who is mahat, who is great soul, how to serve, everything we shall discuss. Next meeting. Thank you. Any question? You have got intelligence, you have got brain. If there is any doubt, whatever is spoken, it is not dogmatic. I mean, it's pushing or pressing something. No. It is scientific and reasonable. Whatever is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Avalam Purana, it's faultless. Nobody can find any fault. Srimad Bhagavatam, Avalam Purana. Avalam means faultless. to eat Krishna Prasada.
that dry fruits. So there are some uh, God has supplied your countries by God's grace. You have got sufficient food stuff. You can use potato, vegetable, cheese also. This is meat preparation. You can eat and offer it to Krishna. The Krishna, these things are supplied by you kindly. You taste it, then I do. You can do it everywhere. Krishna is everywhere. At least we should acknowledge that everything is sent by Krishna, God. That is a fact. Uh, Krishna's laws, or nature's law is so nice that a cow is eating grass and producing milk. Now if you think that grass is the cause of milk, then you are mistaken. Is the laws of Krishna that transforms grass into milk. If you eat, you eat grass, then you will die. But the cow, uh, she is eating grass, that also not supplied by your factory. The grass is produced by nature's way, and she is eating that grass and supplying the most nutritious food, milk, and in exchange you are cutting throat. How you can be happy? Such an innocent animal sees eating grass supplied by God and instead of grass, if you think that she is eating grass from the land, American land or my land, she must give me something or she supplied me. Now what reason there is? So if we human being, if we forget even ordinary mercy, compassion and uh, gratefulness, then what is that human life? And then from national point of view, national means one who is born in this land. The cow is also born in this land. So why uh, the man should be given protection, not the cow? But according to Vedic civilization, you see, you have read Srimad Bhagavatam, I explained, oh, one man was going to kill one cow, immediately Mahat Pariksit took his sword, oh, kill cow in my kingdom, I shall immediately kill. A special protection, Brahmins and cow. You know, we offer Krishna uh, obeisance. Namo Brahmana Devaya Gauramana Hitaraj. Krishna, you are the leader of Brahminical civilization, the purest civilization. Namo Brahmana Devaya Gauramana Hitaraj. You are the well-wisher of cows and the Brahmins. Why special? Stress is given to the word Go and Brahma cows and Brahmin. Then he said Jagadhita. Man, after being first, being well wisher to the cows and Brahmin, then you are well wisher of this general word, Jagadhita. Krishnaya Govindaya Namo. This, this is the prayer. Namo Brahmana Devaya. So why this specific stress has been given to the Cows and Brahmin. Just see Krishna's picture. I was loving the cow. He's, he is instructing by his practical life uh, how he is compassionate with the cows. Uh, he, he played as a cow or boy. Why? Because if in human society these two things are neglected. Cows and the Brahmin, that is animal society. Animal society, that is not human society, that is the idea. Because the Brahmins, they will give you good information of spiritual life, and cows will give you the best food you can have within this material world. That is the uh, real interpretation of Go Brahmanita. If you have 
simply a cow and uh, the great sage Adasi, uh, uh, a child born, uh, it lives simply on cow's milk. First of all, mother's milk, milk. For six months, then when uh, it is a little grown up, you simply give her sufficient milk, uh, she will be very stout and strong. Then supply little grains, roots, etc. So we have got uh, many food stuff in the uh, vegetarian kingdom, and Krishna asks you that patram pusmam phalam toyam jomi bhaktya prajachati. Anyone who is offering me, uh, this is universal. Patram means a leaf. It is just like a leaf. Pushpam a flower. And patram, pushpam, phalam, phalam means a fruit. And toyam means water. So any poor man can offer Krishna. There is no need of, I mean to say, luxurious. Food stuff. But it is meant for the poorest man. The poorest of the poor man can secure these four things. A little leaf, a little flower, a little fruit, and a little water. Any part of the world. Therefore he is prescribing patram pusvam phalam tuyam jumi bhaktyaprajitshati. Anyone who offers me with love and devotion. Taya bhaktyaprajitam. Because it is brought to me with love and devotion, asnami, I eat. A Krishna is not hungry, neither he is poor. But the main thing is bhakta, devotion and love. So whatever you offer Krishna with devotion and love, within this group, as prescribed by him, Krishna accept. So you can offer anywhere. It does not matter that you have to offer in temple. Krishna is everywhere, so you offer anything. This cauliflower is also food, uh, flower. This is also flower. <laughs> and potato is fruit. Uh, fruit, flower. Any other question? Yes. Somebody thinks. 
thing of Krishna and Radha, they're side by side. So it's just like a boy and girl. No. Uh, if Krishna is transcendental soul spirit, similarly the Radha or his expans her expansion, there it is explained in the Brahma Sangita, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavitavi. This is the expansion of the quintessence of spiritual energy, ānanda chinma. Ānanda means blissful and chinma means spiritual. So all Krishna lila, all Krishna's activities, they are manifestation of his spiritual internal potential. You understood this? No, she is already transcendent. She hasn't got to, to become. Become means nobody become. Become means just like to become healthy. To become healthy is, is, a, is, is a thing, not that the man was not healthy. He has fallen diseased. Do you understand? When I say to become healthy, to become healthy does not mean that he was not healthy. He was healthy. Somehow or other he is not diseased. So the become is applicable to the diseased or to the condition, not to the uh, original. So Radha, Krishna or his expansion, they are original spirit. We are also original spirit. In contact with matter, we are now diseased. Therefore, the, to become is applicable to the conditioned soul, not to the liberated. To become the past, present, and future is applicable within these twelve worlds. In the spiritual world, there is no past, present, future. That is eternal. So become is applicable to us who are conditioned. Condition means by contamination of matter we are suffering, so we have to go to the healthy life, spiritual life that is required. Become is to become is not applicable to anything of Krishna's name, fame, form, paraphernalia, expansion. They are all transcendental in turn. And you can also become one of them as soon as you are freed from this material contamination. That is Krishna con- practice of Krishna consciousness. If you practice Krishna consciousness and at the end of life, if you continue, uh, the next life you also become Brahma, Bhuta, Prasanna, Atma, you also associate with the same. And there will be no distinction at that time. Either Krishna or Radha or all expansions, because they are all spiritual. One dance, that oneness, your question was that the oneness, because there is no disagreement, uh, there is no dissension, everything is in harmony, spiritual harmony. Therefore, one.
not 6.30, one and a half hour before sunrise. Yes, that is the system. Yes. In, in Vrindavan, in time, just early in the morning, before, exactly one and a half hour before sunrise, all temples will ding, 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 ding. And people will automatically rise up and go to see the first ceremony. It's very nice. So that you will be forced to rise early in the morning. If you practice, you will be practice to, to early to uh, early to rise, early to uh, early to bed, early to rise. Yes, yes. it becomes automatically healthy when you can rise. Yes. But here you are accustomed to sleep up to twelve o'clock. <laughs> no. That is not good. Yes. And certainly this chanting is next problem. Now we chant. Hare Krishna.